We begin tonight with the Senate's decision to cut short plenary in honor of Nigerian soldiers killed by Boko Haram insurgents in the last three days. At the plenary session, Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki told lawmakers that 44 soldiers were killed four days ago by Boko Haram insurgents in Borno State. The Senate consequently ordered its committees on army and defense to investigate the circumstances which led to the deaths of the soldiers and determine if adequate measures were taken to protect military personnel. Our correspondent Linda Akigbe reports. It is extremely rare to see a senator rise to formally criticize a committee he belongs to as being inefficient. A committee that I am a vice, which has been constituted over three years ago, has not been actually performing as a result of weak leadership. We in the Senate do not know what the Nigerian army is actually doing. The Senate Commission Army is headed by Senator George Akume. Senator Dambaba makes a single request to the Senate. I hereby call for the ethics. My prayer is that the ethics and privileges committee be asked, be asked to investigate, conduct an investigation as to the conduct of the committee and why the committee leadership should be allowed to stand as it is. The conversation about the efficiency of a Senate's oversight of a Nigerian army dovetails into a debate about the recent killing of soldiers in the Northeast. I observe that, um, I think we're all aware that four days ago, was it five days ago, we lost about 44 um, brave soldiers of the, of the Nigerian army. In, 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 in Northern Borno. I don't think it was raised here on any motion for us to pay our respect for these brave men that have sacrificed, made, made the ultimate sacrifice for our own safety, for peace in our country. To lose 40 of them in one day should be a matter of concern. I'm not sure we're taking good care of the safety of our soldiers. I think we're just throwing them on harm's way, and nobody cares. This is one segment of our society that we need to do much for, especially given the sacrifice that we've been making in this country for a long time. The Senate decides to court short plenary session to honor the Nigerian soldiers killed by Boko Haram insurgents in three days of attacks in some villages in Borno State. The upper chamber is also directing its committees on army and defense to investigate the circumstances which led to the death of the soldiers and determine if adequate measures are being taken to protect military personnel battling the Boko Haram insurgency in the northeast. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. And staying with the Senate, the upper legislative chamber has asked the police to immediately vacate the Akwaibom State House of Assembly and desist from preventing legislators from gaining access to the assembly complex. The Senate's resolution comes after a federal lawmaker, Senator Basi Akman, representing Akwaibom Northeast, brought the matter to the attention of the upper chamber. One of the lawmakers had raised the same issue at plenary on Wednesday, November the 21st, when he informed lawmakers that the police invaded and sealed up the Akwaibom State House of Assembly. In the meantime, the Senate Committee on Gas has given the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and the Central Bank of Nigeria five days to present documents which will explain the alleged 22 withdrawals from the NLNG dividend account amounting to $3.12 billion. The committee gave the directive today as it continues its investigative hearing into NNPC's alleged diversion of $1.5 billion from the dividend account of the Nigerian liquefied natural gas. The funds were allegedly used for fuel subsidy, but the chairman of the committee, Senator Basi Akman, is unhappy that the CBN and the NNPC did not provide critical supporting documents which they were instructed to present during the previous hearing. Thereafter, tempers flared between a member of the committee and NNPC's chief financial officer when the committee asked the NNPC to provide documents showing withdrawals from the NLNG dividend account. 
The committee has set a deadline of November the 30th for the CBN and NNPC to present documents showing the authorization for withdrawals from the NLNG dividend account in the last three years, as well as the NLNG dividend account statement. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has left the monetary policy rate unchanged at 14%. The CBN Governor, Godwin Emifiele, who was speaking at the end of the two-day meeting of the committee in Abuja, says that it also retained the cash reserves ratio at 22.5%. He also announced that the liquidity ratio was left at 30% and the asymmetric window kept at plus 200 and minus 500 basis points around the MPR. Overall, the Monetary Policy Committee considered the options of either to loosen, hold, or to tighten. The committee continues to hold the view that although loosening would encourage the flow of credit to the real sector, help in reduction of the aggregate cost of credit and spur business spending and investment, thereby reinforcing the CBN support for output growth and economic recovery, it, however, believes that doing so would reverse more rapidly the gains of price and exchange rate stability achieved so far, given the liquidity impact that would, uh, that would entail. The ensuing liquidity will exert pressure on the exchange rate in the in light of increased capital flow reversals arising from monetary policy normalization by the U.S. Fed. This will further depress the capital market. As for tightening, the MPC holds the view that while tightening will strengthen the stability of the foreign exchange market because of its dampening effect on the demand for foreign exchange, it was however convinced that this would simultaneously dampen investment growth, widen the output gap, depress aggregate demand, and weaken output growth. The MPC recognizes the fact that it had held the policy rate and other policy parameters constant over the last several meetings. Committee underscores that by holding its policy positions constant over this period, it has confidence in the various policies and administrative measures deployed by the bank which have resulted in the moderation in domestic price levels and stability in the foreign exchange rate. Thus, a whole position is an expression of confidence in the policy regime, given the gradual improvement in both output growth and price stability. On this premise, the downward risks to growth and upside risks to inflation appears contained. Committee's decision... In the light of the above, the MPC decided by a vote of il all 11 members present to hold. Let's crunch all the numbers now. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the CEO of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bismarck Rawani. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you. I remember you calling this status quo economics about two months ago, yeah. and you were very unhappy about the hold. Are you still unhappy? No, this was a sensible decision. But 29 meetings, sorry, 29 months and 14 meetings, status quo. But this status quo decision is a sensible decision at this time. Why? There are six major threats to why you couldn't reduce rates. One is that Nigeria still has a recessionary gap of 2.9%. That is, potential GDP is higher than real GDP by 2.9%. The oil price has lost 26% since October. It's down at $63 a barrel from all the way from $86 a barrel. The oil revenues of the country could easily drop to about $9 billion a quarter from around $12 to $16 billion a quarter now. External reserves cumulatively has lost about 13%, down to $41.6 billion. And the central bank governor alluded to this. There are capital flow reversals that are taking place, but they are being contained. And the Naira pressure is building in the foreign exchange market. So for these reasons, it was the risks are elevated. However, there are three good things that have happened. One is that inflation uh, marginally went down this uh, month. 
the terms of trade have actually improved in our favor to 26.9, and money supply is growing quite tepidly. But if any of these things were to change, then you would have a problem. Now, what what is the impact? This is good, you know, the governor was talking about how does it impact on you? Yes, as exactly, an individual? because usually when these figures come out, um, to the average person out there, it's like, how does that change the amount of money in my pocket? This year has been really difficult. A lot of people haven't had as much money as they've had in the past. No. You know, so. Well, here's the good. See, there are three categories of Nigerians. One is a worker. We categorize those guys as suffering and smiling. The second part are the middle class, which is so-so. And then the elites, which is wait and see. In all cases, you'll find that their situation today is slightly just slightly better than it was, but they are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. The guy, the worker, suffering and smiling, really doesn't care. The only thing that has come down are some food prices. Every other thing, unemployment is sharply, going to be sharply higher. We'll get the results very soon. House rent is flat, and medical bills are flat. For the guys in the middle class, everything was flat. No, you know, so-so. So it's just waiting to see. And the other guys, the affluent guys, uh, apart from school fees that have gone higher, is... Uh, Travel tickets have come down because of the winter discounts, and the other things are flat. How could unemployment be coming up? We, we know with all the empower and all the. No, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. But there are six items that we looked at on prices of food mm -hmm. between 2016 and 2018. Of these six items, four fell. The good news is that of these four, palm oil fell by 40 percent. It was 16,500 in 2016. It's now 10,000 naira. Chicken and turkey went from 1,400 to 1,200, down 15%. Gary went down from 15,000 to 6,500, down 56%. And rice went down from 24,000 in 2016, down to 16,000, down 33%. But two things went up. Beans went up from 22,500 to 26,000, up 15%. And tomatoes has gone up by 50% all the way to 18,000. Now, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next is this. The unemployment data is going to come out on December 7th. That data, in our judgment, will go up to at least 22%. That will be the highest level in a long time. So you probably have about 13 million people unemployed. The budget will be passed. And even, you know, it's a modest budget. The $2.8 billion euro bond, will, you know, the minimum wage of 30,000 naira is a very important thing. It goes up by 60%. 60% increase in minimum wage translates into about a 15% general wage increase and a 2% rise in inflation. That is where the problem is. So is it that it won't be felt even if it no. goes up to 30? There'll be a money illusion. So the truth is that if you look at anticipated inflation, anticipated inflation, which is more important than historical inflation, shows my sense is that there are threats to price stability. And we, all the measures are being done to contain it including this particular sensible decision. But after February next year, after the elections, the price is going to be paid. And you see the Naira pressure will continue for exchange markets. Generally speaking, sensible decision, impact is muted at this time. We'll pay the price down the road after the elections because in times of politics, what is politically expedient may not be economically rational. Rational. Thank you so very much, CEO of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Bismarck Rwane, for analyzing that for us on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you. And in part two, after the break, police reply Senate President Dr. Bukala Saraki on offer bank robbery says death of principle will not vindicate him in the case. Please stay with us. <laughs>